All right, when you're working with the clients, you get people that come to you and say, you know, I just feel worthless. I don't know how to gain confidence. I just feel like I don't feel like I'm good enough. And, you know, everybody struggles with this, right? But the EJs in particular really struggle with this. This is their largest demon that's coming from their fourth function. They're missing identity and they're overactive TE or FE at the top where they're just martyring and killing themselves for everybody else but leaving nothing for themselves. Yeah, they're going to feel pretty worthless by the end of the week. So how do you deal with that? What do you do? So especially with an ENTJ, let's just use an, an ENTJ in particular. You're not as smart as them when it comes to the social spectrum. They have double observers, so they're seeing a lot more than you, and they have TE at the top. So they're very aware of, does this work in reality? They're obsessed with, is this real to the tribe? So if you tell them, you don't suck, you're not worthless, and that's actually not true because they do suck and they are worthless, they're not going to fucking believe you. So you can try and boost them up with all this positive talk. It's just going to wear right off. What you start to do is help people see that this giant monster in their head, that I'm not good anywhere, I'm worthless everywhere, I have no confidence in anything, like that's not totally true. Now, if you can kind of chip up that iceberg and get it to break a little bit, now you can start working away at, well, you're not worthless here, you're not worthless here, you're not worthless here. So where are you feeling worthless? Well, and then, you know, where are they feeling worthless? They're feeling worthless of their identity. They're feeling worthless internally. And they may throw out a bunch of external things, but that's not really their problem. Their problem is, I feel worthless inside. So you change all these outside things and I still feel worthless. Ah, there you go. All right, so what's the answer? What do you do? And it's, again, back to a muscle imbalance. Why is the ENFJ feeling dumb? Why is the ENTJ feeling worthless? Because they're not putting any time into themselves. The EJ needs permission from the outside world to take care of themselves. All they want to do is please everyone. They feel horrible. They feel the demon energy. They feel like they're doing something wrong when they're taking time away for themselves. And now the tidal wave is building up and it finally overtakes them. That's why the ENTJ and all EJs, whether it's once a week, once a month, whatever it is, there's that final overwhelm of I hate myself, I'm worthless, I'm dumb, I suck. And then the whole rest of the week, they're running around, superheroes, doing everything for everybody. Everybody likes them, everything's great. And then they crash again, and back, forth, back, forth. So looking at these functions as muscle imbalances, we've had a lot of success with ourselves and with other people we've worked with of telling them like, look, here's what your first function is. Your first function is try validation. It's T-E or F-E. Look at your day. Let's pull out the calendar, pull out the clock. Let's look at the actual numbers. How much time are you spending on everyone else? Uh, pretty much all day. Okay, so let's add all those hours up. That's a lot of hours. How much time are you spending on yourself? Well, I get a little bit of quiet time in the shower or when I'm driving. I mean, that's kind of, what, that's it. That's the only time you're taking to feed yourself. So Let's look at these function imbalances here. You got all this for everybody else and this tiny little spec for you. And you're wondering why your life is crashing. A lot of times you explain it plainly to the EJs. They get it because they're so aware of reality of how things work. What's hard for them is then telling them, look, you have to spend more time on yourself. Spend more time finding what is valuable to you. So if you got that EJ in your life, friend, family member, client, whatever, if they were to steal some of that time and energy that they're putting into their first function and apply it to their lower function, things are going to start to get better for them. The point is like they get the ability to work their way out of the problem. And that is something everybody could do. We're always overwhelmed by a giant monster demon. I don't know what it is. I work my ass off every different direction. I try and beat this thing. It always comes back and they just feel worthless, out of energy. What the hell can I do? Defeated. But like, look, this is a giant iceberg. And if you chip away at it right here on its weak spot, this thing gets smaller every day, every day, every day. Like, oh, well, then I guess I could kind of do that. Yeah, you can. And how do you do it? For the ENTJ, you've got to stop running around saving the day. Stop helping everyone else. Stop martyring yourself. Take some actual time. Take those double observers of yours. Take that planning of yours. Schedule time. Track time of where am I getting time to work on what I want to work on, what I value, what I care about. Am I feeling emotionally worthless? Am I feeling sucky? Then make that a job to do. Put that on your list. Don't let it be a big demon, a big monster that you can't solve or finish. Put it as just another problem that you're chipping away at. Now, is that going to feel like it's going to do anything? Oh, hell no. Your body's going to respond with, that's not going to work. That's not making it stop. The pain's still bad. But if you can get a person to get a few days, just a few days of traction on that, they start to get the momentum, they start to get the positive energy, and it starts to move. Why? Because you're dealing with that muscle imbalance. you got to starve that first function and bring up the lower function and start to get it into balance.